I'm here at the Tour de France to see how one of the biggest companies in cycling, Shimano, supports its sponsored teams in time trials. Now, Shimano currently sponsors seven teams in the World Tour here at the Tour de France. They are Bora, Mitchelton Scott, FDJ, Quickstep, Jumbo Visma, Sunweb, and Ineos. Now, some of you may be wondering, what about those other teams that use Shimano, like Bahrain Merida or EF Education First or Astana? Well, those teams do use Shimano, but they're not technically sponsored by them. The ones that are are the ones that I listed. Now, before I go and show you the time trial tech that Shimano helps its teams with, make sure you subscribe to GCN if you haven't already. And also remember to click the little bell icon as it helps the channel out and gives you a notification when we upload new content. I've got a superb example for you here of a Shimano sponsored time trial bike used at the Tour de France. This is the Pinarello Bolide of Geraint Thomas, the reigning Tour de France champion. It doesn't get much cooler than this. Now the obvious thing that stands out about this bike, apart from the, the time trial frame, is the wheels. And they come from Shimano's uh, subsidiary Pro. Now we have a disc wheel at the back, and a very distinctive tri-spoke at the front. The reason why they use the disc wheel is because it offers lower drag than a normal spoked wheel. It doesn't have all the spokes that can catch the wind and effectively slosh around. But the reason why they don't use the disc at the front as well is because it's too aerodynamically unstable. That big disc makes you faster, but it acts like a big sail, which means that if you were to have it on the front wheel where there's the pivot of the steering, it would effectively, if there was a gust, it could knock the steering off and potentially cause the rider to crash or at least knock them off course. So instead we have the tri-spoke from Pro, which is a very aerodynamic wheel, but there's other wheels offered from Shimano as well. So we have the Shimano C60 and the shallower Shimano C40. And the wheel that the riders will use in the front is very much down to personal preference and also the conditions. So on very windy days, you can expect the riders to use a shallower wheel like the C40 or perhaps sometimes lighter riders as well. They prefer a shallower wheel as well. Another piece of really cool kit that Shimano supplies to the pro teams are specialist chain sets. I love these, I think they're really, really cool. So, look at the size of the chain set that's on Geraint Thomas's time trial bike. It's an absolute whopper. I mean, you could eat your dinner off that, it's such a big dinner plate. It's a 5846. Now, most of us mortals, when we ride bikes, we either ride a, a 5034 compact chain set or maybe a, a 5236, but that chain ring is huge. So Geraint Thomas is obviously very, very strong, as are many of the pros, and so they do push bigger chain rings. But they're not generally using the 58 with the 11 tooth tiny cog at the back. They generally ride it in the middle of the block. And the advantage of having a bigger chain ring is that it offers a better chain line and also bigger chain rings create less friction within the drivetrain. And the reason for this is that the chain travels through less tight angles. And if you use smaller chain rings, well, that's less efficient, that's less mechanically efficient because there's more friction in all the little joins in the chain as it bends more through all the tighter angles. And by saving this small amount of friction in the drivetrain, they can save a few watts when the rider is pedaling. This is only a small amount of power, something in the region of, you know, three to five watts. But when the winning margins are so small in time trials, this can be significant. This can be the difference between winning or losing. The other cool thing about these chain sets is that the inner chain ring and the outer chain ring are matched together in a set. So here we have the 5846. And the reason for that is because if you have too big a gap between the chain rings, you can't mix and match them, for example. You can't have the, the 58 and pair it with a 34 because the gap is then too big and you can potentially drop the chain when you change between the two. And so you have really, really intricate and really careful ramping. The shaping of these teeth is deliberate and matches up with the shaping on this, on this inner chain ring so that when you change, it shifts perfectly. 
And while we're talking about the drivetrain, we need to talk about the cassette because there are different options available there too. Now, Geraint Thomas has opted on this occasion for an 1130 cassette. Now, that offers the biggest range available. But Shimano also does 1128 and 1125 cassettes. Now, the choice of the cassette that's fitted depends on rider preference, but also the, uh, the specific stage or course profile of the time trial that they'll be riding. Now, flatter courses, riders might opt for an 1125. And the reason for that is because it's a closer ratioed cassette, which means that the jumps between each gear are smaller, which means you can kind of fine tune and have just like smoother gears and really fine tune your cadence and your gear choice. But the downside to an 1125 is that if there's a hill in the course, you don't have that bigger 28 or 30 tooth gear for getting up the hill. I've come over to Group Armour FDJ to have a look at their time trial equipment. Now they're a really good example because Group Armour FDJ were a team that would quiver and have nightmares at the prospect of a team time trial. They'd often lose a lot of time to their rivals, but they turned it around. And they did this by well, looking at their training, but also their equipment. So let's have a look. From your perspective as a mechanic working on bikes such as this, which have incredible amounts of integration, how is life different when you're using an electronic group set like DI2 compared to the traditional cable group sets from, you know, mechanical group sets from, from, from older days? I think we are a little bit spoiled because we have all the nice equipment, especially the DI2, because uh, as you can see, we want to have everything inside uh, with uh, the mechanical group set that's probably a little bit easy to have such a clean setup. Uh, for, for us, it, I mean for aerodynamics, it's, it, DI2 is what you need. And so I noticed, well, on the front there's quite an interesting it's quite unusual. What's going on with the, the shifters on, on the, on the tri-bar extensions on Stefan's bike? Well, it started in the beginning of the season, you know, where we did the fitting with Stefan. And he really wanted something, you know, like a really specific setup of the bike. And uh, we decided that uh, we wanted to use the sprint shifters, which is maybe sounds a little bit strange, but uh, the sprint shifter you can use uh, just by connecting to the, to the normal brake shifter. And I guess it's also useful that you can shift both in the base bar and on the tri bars as well, whereas on mechanical group sets. Exactly, exactly. That's what you have. You have to be in the aero position to shift. That's very important. But if you come to a turn or like a short hill or something, you have to be able to, to react immediately. It's all about seconds, and that's how you do it with DI2. Change gear and brake on a time trial bike uses different shifters and the reason for this is that the time trial shifters are designed to be smaller and more aerodynamic and well they're ergonomically different because they're in a different position, completely different orientation to a normal road bike and so Shimano makes special ones. So you can see here the Jura Ace time trial levers that go in the base bar with their smaller levers and also these buttons on the extensions which means you can change gear both in the base bar and on the extensions. And a cool thing here at the Group Armour FDJ team truck is we have examples of three different types. So on Rudy Mollard's bike, he's got the previous generation extension shifters. Then on Stefan Kung's bike, he's actually got a hack. This is really cool. He's got some sprint shifters on the end of his bar ends. And they work exactly the same way. And that's one of the beauties of Jura Ace is the wires can simply be routed into the junction box and it, well, it works. And then moving back here onto uh, one of the other riders' bikes, we've got the latest model of extension shifters in the end here with these simple buttons. Very nice. One of the cool things about Shimano DI2 being electronic is that you can actually program it. And that's actually easier to do than you might think. There's an eTube app, which you can get on your phone or tablet. And using that, you can connect it to the group set and you can do a number of things, such as you can program 
what the function of specific buttons are. So you can normally you'd have the standard setup of this button shifts down and this button shifts up, but you could switch it around if you wanted to, or you could even make these buttons control the front derailleur if you really wanted to. But it's cool to have that customization for the riders. You can also tune the gears with the system as well. So for example, certain gear combinations aren't as efficient as others. And you can set the system to avoid these for you automatically. So for example, the big chain ring at the front, and when that's paired with the big sprocket at the back, that's a cross chain, uh, and it's not very, it's a suboptimal gear, and it creates a lot of additional drivetrain friction and isn't very efficient. So you can set the system so that you can never enter that gear, which is kind of useful. And finally, a really important piece of tech that Shimano provides is its power meter. Now this is also found on the road bikes that the sponsored teams will use. But in time trials, power meters are hugely important. Many riders ride to power now because it allows them to gauge and pace their effort very effectively and not go out too hard. And going out too hard can mean you, you blow up and hemorrhage time before you even get to the finish and, well, lose. I hope you've enjoyed this behind the scenes look at how Shimano provides specialist equipment to help support its teams in time trials. And if you have, then please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And to see how Shimano, well, supports teams in the cobbled classics with specialist bits and pieces, then you can click over here. I really love the time trial tech though. I'm a bit of a time trial nerd. And in case you'd like to buy one of these brilliant France themed GCN t-shirts, well, We've got them for sale in the GCN shop. You're in luck. So click down here.